Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be looking at how we can use STB image in our SDL3 application. If you aren't familiar with STB image, it's a header-only image loading library and a part of a larger group of header-only libraries in the STB family. These are all either public domain or MIT licensed, so they can be freely used in our projects. If you're looking to load images easily in your program, of course there's always SDL image, but STB image is also great and works well everywhere. All you have to do is head to the STB repository, click on the STB image header, then click download raw file and save it in your project. Normally, when I incorporate external library sources directly in my project, I like to create a folder called ext for external libraries. And in there, I can add a folder called stb. We save the stb image header in there and move on. Here you can see my project structure and see that the stb image header is indeed in my source tree. I also like to configure my build script and tell CMake where I can find my external libraries. Taking a look at the CMake list.txt file, simply add a target include directories call, providing the executable target and the path to the ext folder to the search paths. Now let's take a look at how to actually work with stb image. The first thing you got to do, of course, is include the stb image header. But that's not all you have to do. The STB image library also needs to generate its function definitions and requires you to define STB image implementation in one of your source files. Once you've done that before including the STB image header, when the preprocessor runs, STB image will generate all of its function implementations when it includes the header. Once you've done that, you're all set up and ready to load some images. Let's look at how we can do that. This function is from my SDL3 game development video here on YouTube. Check out the link in the description. The load texture method receives my SDL renderer pointer and a path to the image that I want to load. The first thing we do is declare some variables to receive the image metadata. STB image gives us the image width, height, and the number of color channels the image contains per pixel. Next, we call the STBI load function, where we pass a C style string for the image path and pointers to the three integers we declared above. STBI load will fill those with the details when it loads the image. The last parameter is the number of color components you would like STB image to give you when it's finished loading the image. For simplicity, I'm always loading my images using four color components to represent RGBA. These are the red, green, blue, and alpha components of the image. The return type of this function is an STBI UC pointer which is just the pointer to the pixel data consisting of an array of unsigned character bytes. Once we have this data, we can move on to passing it to SDL. An important distinction to understand is the difference between SDL surface and texture. SDL surfaces hold image data in system RAM, easily accessible by the CPU. The texture objects represent buffers in GPU memory and will be read from when drawing the game. In order to get the image to the GPU for drawing, we first need to create the STL surface object, which is like a staging area that will then be copied to the GPU. To create the STL surface, we can call the STL create surface from function, passing in the width and height of the image, also providing STL pixel format RGBA32 as the pixel format of the image. You should generally use either RGBA32 for four channel images with alpha, or RGB24 for three channel images without alpha. There are quite a few other pixel formats, but you'd want to use those if you have a very good idea of what type of image you're loading and you're sure the pixel data is stored in the format you're actually providing. Next up is the pointer to the pixel data and the final parameter specifies the pitch or simply put the byte size of each row in the image. This is easily computed as the product of the image's width and the number of color components. Once you get your STL surface object, you can create your STL texture by calling the STL create texture from surface function, where you provide your STL renderer pointer, as well as the surface object we just created. STL now has all of the information it needs in the surface object to generate a texture object and copy the pixel data over. In my project, I keep track of loaded textures in order to automatically free them later, so I'm adding them to my textures vector, which gets cleaned up later. I'm also using a pixel art graphic style, which is why I'm setting the scaling mode of the texture to nearest neighbor. This prevents the GPU from blending pixels together, which can lead to blurry images when drawing and scaling the graphics. 
Finally, since we're no longer in need of the image and system memory, we can free the memory it was taking up. The data is sitting in VRAM and ready to be read from by the GPU. SDL Surface does not own the pixel data we provided it with, but rather refers to it. This is why it's important to first call SDL Destroy Surface and then call STBI Image Free to actually free the memory. Doing it the other way around would lead to the surface object pointing to invalid memory. In the end, I just return my texture pointer and draw it in my game using the SDL renderer. That's all you really need to know to get STB working with SDL in your projects. Of course, you want to make sure you're adding error and null checking in all of your code, which I'm not showing here for brevity. I hope this video was useful to you. Please like and subscribe and leave your comments down below. Let me know if you have any ideas about what you'd want to see next. See you in the next one.